Uh, good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome you to Chelsea and welcome the governor, the lieutenant governor, and her uh, state housing team here. Uh, you're here in the Box District, which is a program that was built in uh, collaboration with the state about seven or eight years ago. So what you see around you is about 248 units of uh, affordable family housing. Um, it's these kind of programs conceived by the state in unity with um, uh, municipalities that allow new neighborhoods to be built here. So neighborhoods need, uh, cities need partners. The state is critical to that, to the financing of the, these kind of projects. So, um, uh, and uh, in, in addition, you know, cities need partners like the neighborhood developers, um, good for-profit developers like Mitchell Properties and Tregorth, and, um, uh, and city councils that support these kind of initiatives. So we're really pleased to have you all here and to look forward to what is in store for us to meet our current housing challenges here in Chelsea. So with that, I'll invite the governor up to uh, introduce the program. Thank you. Thanks, Ned. Thanks, Ned. Well, good morning. Good morning, Chelsea. Great to see everybody, and uh, really appreciate everybody turning out. This is this is a big day, and this is a really big deal. We know we know it's a really big deal, and. I'm just really, really proud of the team, and that includes the team in the administration and the team across this state. So many stakeholders represented here today, and it was through teamwork and partnership that we were able to draft this, you know, once-in-a-generation housing bond bill that is absolutely needed at this time. Um, and I just want to begin by thanking all who helped make this, make this happen. I also want to thank Ned Keefe for hosting us. It's always great to be in Chelsea. I can't think of a better place to be more representative of what's possible as you look around this great, this great box district. Uh, we're joined by so many in, gov in government, including your own words, Representative Garcia. Thank you so much for being here today. Members of our team, the Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, our Secretary of Housing, who's making a return to Chelsea, no stranger. <laughs> she loves her Chelsea peeps, she says. She does. Um, our Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities, Ed Augustus. Se Secretary of Administration and Finance, Matt Gorkowitz. So many others throughout the administration represented here today. Um, housing champions and community advocates, Rachel Heller from Chapa, Nicole Obi from Beckma, Frank Callahan and the Mass Building Trades, Nicole Beckles and all the public housing advocates. Hey, hello to the blue shirts and GBIO. <laughs> Tom O'Brien, HYM, representing the developer community, and J.D. Chesloff of the Mass Business Roundtable. Look, as I said, uh, this is a great place to make this announcement. What was once a distressed area, an area to avoid, is now a thriving, diverse community. And it's made possible by vision, by investment, and most importantly, by partnership. Partnership of the local, state, and nonprofit and private actors all coming together. And you look around you, and it's just a great example. Of course, as we go across this state, because we're going to get this done, success in each community may look and should look a little bit different. But the bottom line is that every community in this state should have affordable, livable housing for every resident. It's what we want to deliver. Now we know, we know that housing is the single biggest challenge facing folks across Massachusetts. You can look at the data, you can look at the vacancy rates, which are the lowest in the country, or home sales, which are at a 13-year low, um, the vital signs do not indicate a healthy market right now in our state. But you don't even need the data because everybody just about is impacted in this, feels it one way or another. Parents uh, seeking to rent a two-bedroom apartment so a child can have their own space. A young family trying to save up for a down payment on their first home. A new college graduate 
looking at where to start their career, a senior facing a rent increase, a public housing resident in a rundown unit. Across the board, people are feeling the pressure of the high cost of housing. It's impacting and adding to stress in people's lives, and it's also affecting in very real ways whether or not people are going to stay in Massachusetts. High housing costs are hurting people and they are hurting our great state. They drive up the cost of living and they eat up people's paychecks. They're a barrier to equity and to opportunity and also public health, especially for our black and Latino communities and our low income communities. They threaten our economic competitiveness, making it harder to attract jobs and workers to our state. And that's why since day one, when we started as an administration, we have made housing a top priority. The goal, build more homes, make it more affordable. It's as simple as that. That started by creating the first ever Secretariat of Housing and Livable Communities. That's why we did this, folks, because we knew we needed to have this separate, intentional, dedicated effort to housing production and housing affordability across the state. Already, with Secretary Augustus and his team, we've taken steps to help people pay their rent and their mortgage. Our new tax cuts get more money to families, to seniors, and to renters. Our first budget added close to 1,000 new rental vouchers. We've worked with cities and towns to implement the MBTA Communities Act and increase access to transit-oriented housing. We launched the first ever climate bank in the country dedicated solely to affordable housing. These are good steps forward and they will make a difference. But we know we have to go really big. The moment and the people of this state demand it. For over three decades, housing production has not kept pace with our population, and we have a severe housing shortage in Massachusetts. There aren't enough homes to go around, and prices have gone up. I don't want people leaving. I don't want to see people struggling. We don't want our economy to stop growing and thriving. We don't want our communities to see disinvestment. So what we're going to do is invest in housing, invest in new homes, unlocking new opportunities, making homes and housing more affordable. And that's why today we're filing legislation, calling it the Affordable Homes Act. It's a four billion. I said we were going to go big. And we're going to go big. And we must go big to meet this moment for Massachusetts and for what everyone across this state deserves. $4 billion to create homes all over the state, 40,000 new homes, another almost 30,000 affordable homes that we'll get through preservation, renovation, and rehabilitation, and so much more. This is gonna be legislation that will make our state more affordable for everyone. It's gonna help us meet our climate goals. It's gonna empower communities to meet their residents' needs, to revitalize our main streets and our neighborhoods, improve the quality of life. I'm excited about it, you can tell, because it's really, really big. So let me explain. So four billion, what is this? Four billion, it's a bond bill, a housing bond bill. It represents state capital spending authorization across 18 different agencies uh, and housing programs. These are proven programs, as well as some new innovative programs. These are direct uh, investments and grants, and we will be creating thousands of affordable homes for low- and middle-income families with unprecedented capital infusion into the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, the Stabilization and Investment Fund, and so much more. I told you we're advancing climate goals and improving public health. How? Well, with a 450% increase for sustainable and green housing initiatives. We'll support local capacity with $175 million in, in investment in our new Housing Works program. This is a program that cities and towns can use and operationalize to prepare their infrastructure for new homes. We'll create more homes than ever before for people with disabilities, for our veterans, for people coming out of homelessness, people recovering from substance use disorders, and more. 
And this one is big. We're going to repair and modernize over 43,000 units of public housing across our state. This includes money for accessibility, for decarbonization, for importantly putting our most vulnerable residents on the cutting edge of sustainable and healthy homes. There's so much more. This is a comprehensive, equitable investment plan. It's designed to support our communities and reduce the housing costs for all residents. In addition to capital authorization, this legislation also sets out tax credits for housing production. That includes a new homeowner, homeowner production tax credit. It will create home ownership opportunities for moderate middle income households. It extends and expands the community investment tax credit, which incentivizes donations to CDCs or other nonprofits that produce affordable housing. And all of this is building on some really, really important work already done, already in the bank, the housing credits that we worked hard with the legislature on to expand in our tax cut package, HDIP for gateway cities, and low-income housing across the state. Third and importantly, this bill sets forth a landmark collection of new policies, important policies to advance housing in our state. They include policies to establish a state infrastructure for advancing housing production and housing equity. This includes a statewide housing plan and an office of fair housing. They include, they also include policies to create new options and expand tools for key housing stakeholders from our regional and local housing authorities to financing agencies to our transportation partners. Importantly, they include tools that empower local cities and towns to create homes, foster community and equity, and improve quality of life. Look, here are some other specifics. A local option on the transfer fee. This is for, this is for high dollar sales to, for, to help with affordable housing. Inclusionary zoning by simple majority, which will allow cities and towns to dramatically expand affordability in their community. A process for establishing seasonal communities de uh, designation. That's going to allow special programs for towns that deal with some of the big fluctuations in employment and housing needs throughout the year. And as of right status to accessory dwelling units statewide. This is important. The data shows what ADUs yield, okay? And this step is going to unblock uh, one of the most well-established organic and importantly, community-centric forms of housing access. Finally, in addition to filing this historic legislation, we're also filing a few executive orders um, that are about advancing housing production and affordability in our state. We're creating a, a housing advisory council that's going to continue to guide the work of developing housing in the state. So a housing advisory council. Second, a commission on unlocking housing production why? Because we got to get after it. Streamline production. Recommend actions to expand the supply of housing in our state. Three, we're going to focus on identifying surplus land for housing, surplus public land for housing. And the lieutenant governor is going to work directly with our state agencies to develop an expanded inventory of that public land that we can put to important good use for housing. So today, look, um, today is about meeting the moment. It's about meeting the moment for Massachusetts. It's about meeting the moment and the needs of residents across this state. We've heard you. We listened to you. And today we're taking action. And in the days ahead, we're going to need collective action and teamwork to get this done. I look around. I have never seen such a broad array of stakeholders. When I think about, just look around, you know most of you, and, and there are a lot of you you don't know, and that's a good thing, because it shows the imperative of this work. We need it for the health and well-being of our residents. We need it for economic growth and development in our state. This is a win for everyone in the state. 
But to secure it, we're going to need everyone's engagement and help. Spring's coming. Construction starts are coming or not, dependent on our ability to work together. So let's go, let's get after it, and let's deliver the kind of affordable, livable communities that everybody in this great state deserves. And now I'd love to welcome uh, a fabulous lieutenant governor and the best teammate I could have. And importantly for this moment, uh, not, only, uh, not only a person who understands uh, Chelsea well, importantly understands housing extremely well and has been extremely focused on this. So I welcome to the podium LG Kim Driscoll. I love it when the governor's fired up, ready to go. It was awesome. Thank you, Governor, and thank you to all our partners and colleagues. What an amazing turnout for what is a really special day. It's great to be back in Chelsea where I had the good fortune to work in local government for a number of years. I remember what this site looked like before. Hallelujah to all the partners that made this happen. This is truly a wonderful, diverse community with incredible cultural resources and access to major jobs. It's a community where families work hard just to make ends meet and where seniors can't afford big rent increases. Every dollar counts for families in Chelsea. And high housing costs hit really hard. And frankly, that's a similar story in so many communities across Massachusetts. Knowing how hard folks are working just to keep a roof over their head is what drives us to tackle this affordability every way we can. We are fired up to be here today. Did you hear that passion? Like, yeah! Because as the governor said, there's just no doubt that housing supply has failed to keep up with the demand. And as a result, one third of Massachusetts households, including 50% of renters, think about that, 50% of folks who are renting an apartment are overburdened with housing costs. Those cost burdens are even higher when you think about folks who are in low-income households. And home ownership is completely out of reach for so many individuals, especially for black and brown community members where home ownership rates are half of what they are for white families. We all know we have a big housing challenge. And we are no longer just going to admire this problem. We are going to tackle it. We're going to tackle this housing shortage and meet the growing demand for both market rate and affordable homes. And that's exactly what this legislation does. So today is a big day. It's part of a journey we've been on since the first day of this administration. I was proud to chair the governor's housing working group starting in January. We developed a structure for the new executive office of housing and livable communities. And we're thrilled when the governor appointed the Commonwealth's first housing secretary in 30 years, Secretary Ed Augustus. That was the first signal we were gonna go big. Uh, the governor tasked us all with going big on housing affordability. Secretary Augustus and his team have really led that work. Shout out to all the members of HLC who are here, Chris, Eric, the team from a and as well. This is not just about housing, it's also about money. So Matt and his team, Danielle and others. This legislation is historic. It is gonna boost housing production across all income levels and also preserve our state's public housing, something that hasn't been done in a long time to this degree. <laughs> this legislation includes a robust set of big, bold, achievable policy proposals too. It sets us on a path for a more diverse, vibrant, and competitive Commonwealth. As a former local official, as a mayor, I've been up close. I've got the scars on my back uh, from leading housing. I know how hard it can be to drive consensus, but I also see how transformative it can be when you hit that sweet spot, when you're developing the type of housing that you need, when beautiful new homes get built, like the ones that are here, when there's access for families at different income levels, when both young people and seniors can stay in the communities they love, when newcomers can find a home and bring new cultures and talents, that's the type of livability we're seeking. When the people who we rely on in our communities can afford to live there, afford to live in the communities they're serving. 
That's when neighborhoods flourish, when there are enough homes for a community to be tight-knit and welcoming for all. That's what this legislation is going to make possible. We are pumped to be at this point, and now I'm so grateful to be introducing a colleague who has really led this effort, making sure we touch base with all of our stakeholders. He knows what it's like on the ground in a local community. He also knows the importance of penciling out projects. He's going to lead this effort going forward, our Secretary of Housing Livable Communities, Ed Augustus. Well, thank you, Lieutenant Governor, for that, that warm introduction. And I want to thank you for all your advice and guidance as we put this project together. And uh, her passion is only surpassed by her knowledge about the issues of housing. So uh, we really appreciate all of that. Uh, I want to thank uh, Governor Healy for the vision uh, that you set in motion to address one of the greatest challenges of our time and to thank you for giving me the honor to serve in this role. I also want to thank my terrific partner, Secretary Gorkowitz, and the amazing team at ANF. Uh, it was an incredible joint effort uh, and really putting together this historic piece of legislation. Today, the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities is 140 days old. Uh, and since then, we've been laser focused uh, on our clear charge from the Governor and Lieutenant Governor. And you can see how passionate they are, and they were unequivocal and couldn't have been clearer. We want more housing, we want it faster, hurry up and get it done. <laughs> and that sense of urgency and passion comes from understanding how this crisis faces and interacts and affects people's everyday lives. That's why you see the passion that you see this morning. And that's the sense of urgency uh, that our teams brought to this work. And I'm proud to be here today uh, to celebrate the launching of the Affordable Homes Act, the most significant housing legislation filed in Massachusetts since 40B 50 years ago. <laughs> this isn't your typical housing bond bill. It includes $4.1 billion in capital authorizations. more than double the previous housing bond bill. It includes 28 significant policy proposals and three executive orders. It's big, it's bold, and it meets the moment for what we need to tackle this housing crisis. We're driving housing production and preservation through existing programs like Commonwealth Builders that spurs construction of affordable single-family homes in gateway cities and a new momentum fund to accelerate development of mixed-income multifamily housing. We're investing in housing safety net systems to ensure seniors, extremely low-income residents, and people with disabilities can live in safe, accessible housing with dignity. And we are creating an Office of Fair Housing to combat housing discrimination. And, pro and proposing eviction record sealing to prevent eviction records from becoming a barrier to finding housing in the future. We're giving local cities and towns the tools they need to address the unique challenges of their communities. That's where housing is built, and we want and need to work closely with our local partners to bring more desperately needed units online. We're kick-starting innovation with new social housing demonstration program and facilitating conversions of offices, old malls, and other out-of-date retail spaces for residential use. We're making important, we're making important strides uh, on our climate goals with $150 million to decarbonize our public housing stock. As well as $115 million for climate resilient affordable housing and directives for all of our investments to prioritize and incorporate the state's climate and decarbonization goals. 
and we're building home ownership opportunities with up to $50 million for Mass Dreams to support first time home buyers disproportionate, in a disproportionately impacted communities through assistance. Through assistance with down payments and closing costs and our new home ownership production tax credit to the building of more home ownership units. The Affordable Homes Act is just one, albeit a momentous, part of the Healy Driscoll housing agenda. Just two weeks ago, Governor Healy signed an into law tax relief bill that included historic increases in HDIP and LIHTC. Two powerful tools that will jumpstart both market rate and affordable housing. We're also ushering in dramatic transformation in the zoning landscape in 177 municipalities as we continue to implement the MBTA Communities Act. This will create opportunities for multifamily housing along our public transportation corridors. This past summer, HLC updated our guidelines to the MBTA Communities Act to enhance mixed-use development opportunities without sacrificing the number of housing units required under the law, but also added additional state programs that non-compliant communities may lose access to if they do not comply with this important law. All of, all of these initiatives, the Affordable Homes Act, capital authorizations, the policy proposals, coupled with increases to HDIP and LIHTC, and continued implementation of the MPTA Communities Act will supercharge our housing production. This process was not done in a vacuum. In the 140 days since the Secretary was created, we engaged nearly 120 stakeholders. I think every one of them is here today. <laughs> Uh, developers, housing advocates, local leaders, public housing residents, and those who know the issues best. We use, these, we use these conversations to develop a comprehensive, sharply focused approach to craft legislation that benefits all of the residents of Massachusetts. And I'm grateful for the collaboration of our stakeholders and look forward to continue continuing the important conversations with them and our partners in the legislature. I also want to thank the teams at HLC and ANF who've worked to craft this bill. I'm fortunate to have inherited an incredibly dedicated and talented uh, staff from the former DHCD, as well as to have hired uh, an all-star team of folks who together have created an amazing army of professionals who care passionately about this work, and I'd ask them all to wave here so we can acknowledge their hard work. We stand here today in a neighborhood that was built by those who came together to create something unique. More than a thousand people now live in what was largely an empty block. The box district could not have been redeveloped without without the hard work of committed community members. Today, families live here and children play in this park. It's an important reminder to all of us, this is not simply about building home, houses and adding apartments. This is about creating livable communities. It's about giving every person the opportunity to afford a roof over their head, safe, comfortable place to call home. It's about building a commonwealth where the next generation can achieve their dreams. Today, we take a major step down that path. It's now my honor to introduce uh, a leader in the housing space, somebody who is always holding us uh, accountable uh, to think bigger and broader, but is always there by your side to help get it done, uh, the Executive Director of CHAPA, Rachel Heller. Yeah. Wow. Wow is all I have to say right now. This is so incredibly exciting. Uh, thank you, Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Secretary Augustus, your incredible team for groundbreaking legislation that builds on the longstanding commitment that Massachusetts has to affordable housing. Massachusetts has been a leader in affordable housing. We are one of a handful of states with our own state public housing. 
our own state rental voucher programs, multiple programs, our affordable housing law, Chapter 40B, that requires every community to have affordable housing, the country's strongest housing preservation law, our own state low-income housing tax credit recently expanded. Thank you very much. The Commonwealth Builder Homeownership Production Program, One Mortgage, Mass Dream, Stash, all aiming to narrow the racial homeownership gap and increase uh, wealth amongst households of color. And the newest one, requiring 177 communities served by the MBTA to allow the multifamily homes that we need. So this is so exciting. <laughs> Housing is the single best investment that we can make to secure the future that we all want and deserve. A diverse mix of homes in every part of Massachusetts means that kids can live near their grandparents, our neighbors can stay, shelter is temporary because people have homes they can afford, entrepreneurs can start businesses and our communities thrive. We need 200,000 new homes in the next decade to stabilize home prices and rents. Now stabilizing prices and rents that are too high for too many means that we need to be intentional about affordability. We need to make sure that as we grow our overall housing stock, we are growing our affordable housing supply as well. The housing bond bill filed today provides the funding and policies for that intentionality so that we can be intentional about affordability, about equity, and about choice so that we can grow this affordable housing supply that benefits everyone. This bill will create and preserve affordable and supportive housing increase home ownership opportunities, invest in the preservation, decarbonization, and redevelopment of public housing, increase accessibility for people with disabilities, expand housing diversity by allowing accessory dwelling units and investing in a social housing pilot program. Congratulations, Representative Connolly. Uh, expand tenant protections and, and, and long-term housing stability with eviction record ceiling. And enable communities to establish real estate transfer fees to fund more affordable housing. These are solutions that will reduce homelessness, create homes at different price points, and create, help really create wealth and build wealth for our communities and for people. This bill expands housing choice. Creating an office of fair housing at the state level will support communities and developers in opening up housing opportunities for people supporting important work happening at the local level to stop housing discrimination and connect state agencies to break down the barriers that divide us. Thank you to Senator Lydia Edwards and Chappas Director of Fair Housing and Municipal Engagement, Whitney Demetrius, for their leadership and their partnership with communities and fair housing experts to develop the statewide structure that's needed to ensure that people can live in the communities that, where they want to live and that every community benefits from investment and economic growth. And this bill keeps us moving forward. It will take multiple policies to meet the multiple needs of our residents, our communities, our economy, and the Commonwealth. The commissions on senior housing and housing for people with extremely low incomes, the creation of a state housing plan, this will ensure that we continue to learn from people's experiences and we plan for the future where every person has a safe, healthy, affordable, and accessible home in the community they choose. So I am really looking forward to working with all of you over the next several months to get this bill done, working with the legislature to make sure that we have the tools we need to put ourselves onto that bright path that we all deserve. So thank you very much and I now have the honor of introducing Nicole Beckles from Mass Union of Public Housing Tenants. Thank you very much. My name is Nicole Beckles, and I am a resident of Overlook Terrace at Orient Heights in East Boston, which is a state-funded public housing development. I am also a board member of Mass Union of Public Housing Tenant, which is an organization run by and for tenants to preserve and improve public housing in our state. Mass Union wants to thank Haley Dres Dreskel Administration and Secretary Augustus for the significant investment in public housing. I won't sugarcoat it. The need is very severe. For decades, 
public housing has been drastically underfunded. Mass Union has members all over the state, and many of us live with deplorable, unsafe conditions, including leaks, mold, asbestos, and more. Many residents are losing hope that things will change. But today, we are grateful to the Haley administration for taking a huge step with this investment, for listening to the tenants. This proposed bond bill includes not just potential of 1.6 billion going to capital improvements, but also important protection for tenants who live in buildings that are developed with private partners, and we hope that the legislature will support this. I live in a development that underwent the process. Our buildings were knocked down and rebuilt with new ownership structure. Tenants had a seat at the table for much, but not all, of the development decisions. More can be done to include tenant perspective in decision makings that will make housing stronger. As Congresswoman and I and I, Ayanna <laughs> Presley says, those who are closest to, to the pain should be closest to the power. That is us. <laughs> Tenants need more support to have meaningful participation at their housing authorities, and especially during develop, redevelopment. We thank the administration for including technical assistance for residents in redevelopment. The process is complex and we need technical assistance. We need legal help and organizers, architects and financial advisors to support us so that we can have a meaningful voice. This will ensure high quality developments and that we don't lose any important tenant protection. Secretary Augustus and Governor Haley, thank you for listening to us. Tenant leaders across the state are listening and paying attention. We look forward to working with you to keep the bond bill strong as it works its way through legislature. Mass Union also looks forward to working with you to preserve, improve, and even expand public housing for our state's most vulnerable residents. Mass Union will continue to be a voice for residents of public housing. Everyone deserves a safe and affordable home. Thank you so much. So I'd like to introduce Mr. Frank Callahan, President of Mass Building Trades Council. Thank you, Nicole. And I want to start by echoing previous statements and thanking the governor, the lieutenant governor, and the secretary, Augustus, for putting forward $4 billion. Wow. Uh, it's go big or go home. I don't want to just repeat some of the comments made about housing. We all know there's a need. Uh, we all know uh, residents need places to live. Our communities need this investment. I want to talk about the career side of this, because when the governor's office called about this event, and they, I only had one edit to what they put down for the statement, and they talked about jobs. This is really about careers. Uh, the Massachusetts Building Trades Unions represents more than 75,000 men and women who work in the trades all across the state of Massachusetts. And we spend over $60 million training our apprentices. This investment provides more career opportunities at good union wages and benefits, not just for these projects, but for projects in the future. And it's not just a big, it's doing it right. We could just throw money at the problem, uh, which is done in too many other states and has been done in the past. But this is a thoughtful investment strategy to make sure that we're not just throwing money and having contractors come in from out of state with low-wage workers who can't afford to live in the communities where they work, can't afford those houses, 
and they have to go home after the job is done, or even people in our communities who can't afford to live in the communities or buy a home in the communities where they live. Uh, this is a good investment with good union wages and benefits, health insurance, retirement, the apprenticeship that I mentioned. Uh, we want to make sure we're doing this the right way. We can expand those opportunities to workers so these communities look like, the workforce looks like the communities where this work is being done. Yeah. That at the end of the day, those workers can walk home from the job site or take a bus, uh, not have a long commute, whether it's from out of state or from another part of the state. That they can contribute to their communities, send their kids to the local schools, as a previous speaker noted. And we do have a lot of responsible developers who do just that. Uh, some of you may be familiar with the Suffolk Downs development, uh, which has registered apprenticeship. Uh, we're working on daycare for the workers to attract more women and younger people into the trades. Gladys. I knew I'd see you here, Gladys. But just, just to make sure this is responsible development, um, and we're just building our communities out in addition to the housing that provides all those, meets all those needs for those workers in the larger community. And one of those developers, as I have the privilege to introduce, is Tom O'Brien from HYM Investments. Uh, I mentioned Suffolk Downs, they're doing it right, they're doing it responsibly, and it's not just putting money in a developer's pockets, it's putting money back into the community and building a real community that people can afford to live and stay in. So it's my pleasure to introduce Tom O'Brien. Thank you, Frank. Thank you very much, Frank. Uh, good morning, everybody. It's such a wonderful morning to be gathered here with so many friendly faces. Many of you have been working on these issues for decades. And um, so as I sit here and just look out, it's, it's wonderful to have you all here. Um, our company, as Frank pointed out, HYM, the HYM Investment Group is responsible for a pipeline of about 10,000 units of housing. Uh, we look forward to building those units in partnership with the men and women of the Greater Boston Building Trades, which we're really excited to continue to do work uh, with those folks and really pleased to be here this morning with you all. I'd like to thank uh, Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll. If today we were announcing a $1 billion bond bill, we would all be pleased. If today we were announcing a $2 billion bond bill, Maybe we'd be a little impressed. Three billion, now you're talking. But four billion dollars. Some people might say that's not possible. Four billion dollars. Some people would say that's not possible. Some people would say, well, you can't afford it. But the lack of housing production in Massachusetts is a very, very, very big problem and it requires big thinking by a great team to fix that problem. We need all kinds of housing. We need senior housing. We need workforce housing, affordable housing. We need to keep our public housing. But after decades of collective inaction, today our entire team, and team is the theme here, I think, of this entire administration, our entire team can move forward together. Every team needs great leaders, and we have great leaders in Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll. And as they often say, this problem requires a team effort. So all of us, elected officials, appointed government officials, nonprofit leaders, for-profit business people, all of us must work together to fix this problem. That's why I'm here this morning. Our government is founded on the principle of compromise and collective action. And now is the time to take big collective action on this big problem. People are counting on us. We need this to compete as a region, and we owe it to our children and our children's children. Let's get this bill moving as quickly as we possibly can. So my job now is to introduce Nicole Obi of the Black Economic Council of Massachusetts, our partner and our friend. Nicole. Good morning, everyone. I, again, I want to add my thanks to um, Governor Healy, L.G. Driscoll, Secretary Augustus Gorkowitz for putting together this wonderful comprehensive housing bill. Um, again, I'm Nicole Obi. I'm the President and CEO of the Black Economic Council of Massachusetts. 
And for those that don't know, BECMA, our role, uh, our mission is that we're committed to building uh, black wealth across the Commonwealth uh, and fostering... <laughs> and really helping to foster an inclusive uh, and equitable economy across the Commonwealth. We work mostly with black-owned businesses to help them grow and thrive. Um, and two of the most common obstacles that we hear from our members are the lack of access to capital and their difficulty in hiring and retaining a workforce. Um, both of these are underpinned by the housing crisis that we've been talking about today. Our businesses really struggle to find employees to help them grow because so many of our, of our people in our community, uh, most of our businesses employ black and brown folks, um, they can't afford to live here anymore. Um, and Massachusetts also, uh, Massachusetts black residents also have the lowest rate of home ownership. And that has significant ramifications for our economic well-being, as homes are often an individual's most valuable asset. And that asset is something that allows entrepreneurs and others to leverage so that they can launch and scale their firms. So to us, our housing crisis is not only a wealth disparity issue, but it's a racial justice issue. And we're so happy that this administration is getting after that. Today's announcement is huge. Uh, it's a huge step forward because affordable housing is so important to all the work that we're all trying to achieve here. And we're excited about the investment in public and affordable housing as it supports our climate and sustainabil uh, sustainability goals. It also helps us to make sure that the state has a plan um, for how we're going to reach those goals and that it, we have a means for holding folks accountable um, as we move through this process uh, of, of creating more affordable housing. It also helps us to combat uh, discriminatory, discriminatory practices that we know have historically really uh, injured our communities and our ability to build wealth and uh, pushes us forward towards ensuring more fairness um, and equity in, in our housing as we develop going forward. So these and many of the other provisions of, the, this, of this new bond bill are really important, and we're excited about that. So thank you once again um, to the Healy Distrigal Administration and their team for your significant work. I love that we're going big. I think it's really important. Um, and I continue uh, to want to work in community uh, with our many partners to help to make sure that uh, we can do the best that we can to get this passed through the legislature and signed. Uh, so uh, I will end here. Thank you so much. And I will turn it over to a great partner of BECMA, um, J.D. Chesloff of the Mass Business Roundtable. Thank you, Nicole. Um, Nicole is an outstanding leader in our community. Um, <clears throat> I appreciate you, Nicole, and all the great work that Beckman does, so thank you. And good morning, everybody. Uh, I am J.D. Cheslaw from the Massachusetts Business Roundtable. The governor talked a lot about competitiveness, um, which is not surprising. She's a competitive person. Um, here's how we view competitiveness. So in this year's CNBC Top States for Business Rankings, Massachusetts was rated among the best for technology and innovation, for education, for access to capital, life, health, and notably inclusion. Similarly, this past summer, we were rated by WalletHub as the best state to live in the country, driven by our top ranking for education and health, and high rankings in categories such as the economy, quality of life, and safety. We have a lot to celebrate. There's a lot of good stuff going on in this state. And, my wife tells me, don't say but, say and. Um, both rankings note similar um, warning signs. Massachusetts is an expensive place to live. It's an expensive place to do business. And according to a, a recent um, study, the state is seeing its highest out-migration numbers in the last 30 years. 
This is consistent with a survey of our members of the roundtable where they told me that 75 percent expect some difficulty in recruiting talent over the next year. The cost of housing is driving much of this, and it's impacting our competitiveness. Our people here are our, are our top competitive advantage. It's always been that way. In recent conversations from more than 50 members of the roundtable, the cost of housing emerged as the top policy issue of concern. The greatest challenge facing the state is affordability, they tell me, and as one member said, if you can't afford to live here and you can't get to and from your job, nothing else matters. The filing of the housing bond bill today marks the beginning of what is sure to be a thorough and exhaustive legislative process. I commend the Healy Driscoll administration for boldly and thoughtfully getting the ball rolling. There are some great ideas in here, and you heard them all this morning. There will be a lot of discussion over the provisions in this bill. Additional ideas will be offered by employers and advocates and others. The legislature will offer their own proposals, and that's good. That's how it should be. That's how the process works. But where we can all agree is that something has to be done regarding housing, and this is a really good place to start. So thank you, Governor. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, <laughs> Secretary Augustus, and your incredible team. Uh, we look forward to working with you all over the next um, weeks and months ahead. With that, let me turn it back to Governor Healy. All right, great. Thank you. Nice job, J.D., batting last in the order. Um, I just want to thank all of our speakers, and I want to just say how grateful I am to everybody who worked really, really hard over many weeks and months to put out what we're really proud of as this housing bond bill today and the three executive orders that go with it. So thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, I, I guess I'm able to take a couple questions. If there, okay, great. Thank you. The question was about rent control. The bond bill and the executive orders do not speak to rent control. It remains my position that local communities are able to exercise what they think is appropriate and, and best for their communities. Um, this bond bill contains not only incredible, you know, $4 billion in, in capital authorization, also significant policy work. And some would say, why did you put all this policy into a bond bill? We put the policy into the bond bill because we're actually in interested in implementing and execution as soon as possible. You have heard from everyone here how imperative it is that we get after it and get after it quickly. And so that's why it may be a start. We think it's a great start, and it includes both the money and the authorization language, as well as we think the policy work that's absolutely essential for us to move forward as quickly as possible. Great. Representative. <laughs> Thank you. Big day. Congratulations. Bueno, buenos días. Es un momento histórico para nuestra comunidad y, y muchísimas gracias a la gobernadora y su administración por anunciarlo aquí en Chelsea. Es una comunidad que está enfrentando pues, altos costos de renta, altos costos de vivienda. Esta inversión es de 4 billones de dólares. Es la más alta en la historia de este estado y lo que eso significa para nosotros es gran momento de innovación. Vemos inversiones no solo a las viviendas públicas, pero también la necesidad de crear más viviendas en esta comunidad. Así que es muy importante. Eh, estamos celebrando grandes victorias para Chelsea. Sabemos de que eh, nuestra organización, la colaborativa, junto a muchos líderes locales, eh, abogaron por muchas de estas legislaciones y hoy las vemos cumplir. Así que es un gran momento para nuestra comunidad, para Chelsea, pero para todo el estado. Así que le agradecemos a la gobernadora, a los secretarios, Y a la teniente gobernadora. Boulder. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think four billion is pretty bold. Um, Twenty-eight policy, you know, uh, outlines as well. 
Um, there actually is a lot. If you read more deeply, there is a lot around that. And I appreciate the importance, too. We, we reference the importance of the, of the uh, MBTA Communities Act. Uh, you know that we took some action a few weeks ago to make sure that, that there was more teeth in that, uh, more incentive in that, because it's, it's absolutely key to getting us to where we need to be, not only for taking care of our residents, but absolutely essential for our economic competitiveness. So there's a lot of good stuff in there. And we look forward you know, to seeing it uh, hopefully implemented soon. Thank you. Great. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.